Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our Car Tech How To video on the 2023 GMC Hummer EV pickup. This is the E4 Wheel Drive Crew Cab 3X, and it's an edition one. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Snell Motors in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. All right, so on this beautiful, huge 12.3 inch all digital driver screen, we have a whole bunch of things we can do. Uh, so uh, to configure it, let's start first. There are some basic pre-made layouts for you and then you can configure some things. So let's take a look at the pre-made configurations. And to do that, you're gonna use the controls on the right side of the steering wheel particularly the four arrows, uh, the two arrows, and then this up down. These arrows are not actually pushable. It's just an indication to push this up or push this down. So I am going to use the left button here, and I'm just going to go right here to display layout, and I'm going to click. And if I go up, I can get lunar, which looks like this. So you got your, uh, right now you've got a compass on your left. You've got how much charge you've got uh, on the blue gauge. And then over on the right is how much power you're using. Okay. Uh, then, uh, and then this, where it says display layout, this can also show different things like uh, media or, or your phone. Okay. If I go to clean, it's going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And here is what you get. And again, you can get rid of this um, display layout on the left. Sport looks like this. Okay. And if I go to off-road and click, that looks like this. And then again, in the middle, you can uh, replace this with different things. If I just go left here, you know, you can have navigation, uh, media, um, uh, vehicle assist systems, and so on. Okay. So let me go back to where I was. Let's take a look at digital. Okay. So interesting, uh, sort of a lunar landscape on the dashboard. And, and it's uh, also in the infotainment screen. You'll see that in a little bit. All right. Uh, so if I go down one more, that is, that is it. That is all I have, uh, for pre-made layouts, but it's nice that you just, you simply have those. If you want to choose these pre-made configurations, basically you're pretty much other than in clean, you're always going to see your percentage of charge somewhere on the left. You've got, um, how many miles that equals after percentage of uh, usage on the right. You got your odometer down at the bottom. You got your driver's assist. Uh, that's these little lines right here. Um, you've got a compass. This is changeable. You've got your gear selector up above that. You got a speedometer. And then of course you've got whether your lights are on or off, uh, how many kilowatts are being used. Okay. So that's how you can quickly change the information on the dash and, and reconfigure a bunch of things. There are other things that you can configure, and, and, and the best way I can show that to you that will show us all the options um, is to go to the off-road display because not all of these displays will do all of these things. They'll do some of them, but off-road seems to do them all. So I'm going to go to off-road, and then I'm going to press this button um, right here to get out of display layout. And now I'm going to go to left side info and I'm going to click here and I can change from uh, currently I'm on compass. So I can change that to time and temp, tire pressure, pitch and roll, G force or nothing. Let's leave it on compass. I'm going to go backwards by using the left arrow. I'm going to go to right side info. Okay, so right now it's set to pitch and roll, but I can switch it to compass, time and temp, tire pressure, of course, pitch and roll, G-force, and none. So you have the same choices on both sides. It just depends on where you would like to see a particular item, left side or right side. Okay, now I'm going to go left again, and I'm going to go to info page options. All right, so on info page options... Uh, right now it's on drive summary, but I can show trip one and two, 
and timer's on. Tire pressure's on, driver assistance is on, trailer brake isn't on, so I'm gonna turn that on. I'm just clicking this button. And if I want, like, if I don't want off-road, I can take that off. But basically, <laughs> what I'd suggest is you select everything because it allows you to, and then you can choose. So now, this is info page. All right. So, I'm going to keep going back to here. And now this is where I'm going to see all that information I just added. Okay. And if I, if I click here, it just takes me back to this edit page. It's a shortcut. But now I can just toggle through and change all the information in the middle of the screen, okay? which is really, really cool. Okay, so that's display layout, left side info, right side info. And like I said, not every um, display layout will give you the right side info. They'll give you the left side info, but not the right side. But now at least you know what's available there. Um, so if it is available, it will show up and uh, and not grayed out. Okay, another thing you can of course change here. Right here's uh, units. You can go to US or metric. Just simply select the one you want and press this button. Uh, if you want speed warning on, if you enable it, okay, then you got to set your speed. Like, do I want to be warned exactly at 55, or maybe I want to go, you know, a couple miles over before it warns me you'll be able to set that. I'm gonna hit the back button here. I'm gonna hit disable. There's no checkbox, which is interesting, but it does say enable or, uh, and then when it's enabled, it says disable. So it lets you know that it's active. I'm gonna go back one more. Speed sign display. If you want that showing, okay, if you have it on, you do need to have a plan to, to have that um, uh, activated and that'll come with the purchase of the vehicle for a short amount of time a trial period and then you'll need to uh, pay for a plan or you can turn that off okay I'm gonna hit the left arrow uh, software info or if you're something's not quite working right and you can't fix it you can always re try resetting to defaults okay now that was info pages right there you notice if I go left again I just go back to that gear wheel so instead I'm gonna go to media now for media, if I want to change the source, I'm going to push here, and then I can change. Because this is Google built in, you're going to have uh, Google News, uh, Amazon Alexa, that kind of stuff. Okay, there's all your choices. You just click on the one you want. Okay, now to change the volume, you're going to use the two buttons behind the steering wheel on the far right. If you want to change the favorites, you're gonna use the two uh, buttons behind the steering wheel on the left, and you'll be able to feel them with your fingers, okay? All right, let's go over one more to navigation. Now, if I had a course plotted, it's gonna show up a turn-by-turn -turn navigation. All right, I'm gonna head over one more. Uh, this is where your phone would connect. I don't have my phone connected currently, but if I did, this is where that would show up. Your, you know, to make a call, uh, recent calls. You do have a button on the steering wheel to press to say uh, hang up the phone call, um, but you'll be able to click on contacts and that kind of stuff from this page using this uh, rotary dial. You'll be able to access, you know, your recent calls, uh, contacts, all that stuff just by using these controls here. So. That's how you can configure the driver's information screen. Again, very nice. They give you, you know, like four or five preset screens, and then you can manip manipulate uh, some of the information on the left or the right. Um, and in sp some particular um, display layouts, your some of that information is going to show up in the middle of the screen instead of the uh, the right and left sides. So if I go back and I go back, see now that's on the right here. So it just switches locations, but it's but it's still there. Okay, next we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. So the infotainment screen is a 13.4 inch screen. Uh, it's large. And right below it, it has physical buttons for all of these items that you see digitally displayed. And then down here you have more physical buttons. So you're not pushing the actual screen, you actually have a physical button for each of these. And um, 
So that is really nice. And I'm going to point out some really cool features about those buttons here. Um, but uh, so with the system here, this is Google built in. Uh, so you're going to have Google Maps. You're going to have a Google Voice Assistant. You'll have the Google Play Store. Um, and that all come with a trial period with the vehicle. And after that expires, um, those three things disappear uh, unless you continue to pay the fee. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, you can always use uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because it has uh, wireless uh, on both of those. It also has AM and FM and Sirius XM as well as HD and, of course, normal Bluetooth connection. It does have a 14-speaker Bose Centerpoint uh, sound system, which is very nice. I had some chance to listen to it, and it does sound really good. All right, so let's talk about um, the screen. Basically, these are shortcuts, okay? And they can be changed. You can reorder them, okay? And it just flip-flops whatever you wanted to change with it. Or you can drag things off the home page and put them in. So if you want to have cameras as a quick button instead of your phone, you can do that. On the screen, you have this area, and then you have this area. And this has uh, some preset windows, so let's just go through them. This is the first one. Okay, so this is going to give navigation. And then you can have something else over here, say audio, and you have a split screen. Okay, if I go again, this would be your trailering app, uh, charging information. If you click there, you can actually get energy usage. If I go again, you're going to get tire pressure, whether your front and rear diffs are locked or not. If I go there, this is your pitch and roll. Right now, I think it's just trying to figure out where we are. Yep. Okay. And then if I go one more to auxiliary, um, you know, a lot of pickups on today come with pre-built auxiliary buttons. The auxiliary buttons in the Hummer EV are in the screen, and there are six of them that you can preset. They're already pre-wired. They're ready to go. You just got to hook up whatever thing you want to it, and you will uh, be able to rename these as well. Okay, let's go. we got one more screen, and then you got a clock down here. Now, if I go back to navigation for a minute, you notice there's a little arrow over here. If I click that, it makes it split screen. If I click here, it makes it full screen. So on any screen that you're in, you can, you, you'll see that little arrow. Uh, okay, now the arrow disappeared, okay, because we're on the off-road page and it doesn't give us the option to have that extra page. So now you just have this, okay? So some windows will give that to you and some won't. Let's just go back to, to navigation for a minute. All right, so that's basically the screen and how it's divided, how it's laid out. Now, down here uh, for the climate control, you have all physical buttons. And what I like is there, I call them smart buttons because if I click here for the heated seats, and now turns these two buttons into ventilated or heated. Click again, and they go back to sync and AC. So the buttons can change function depending on, on um, what you click on. Now, if you go below the screen, of course, you have a heated steering wheel. you got your diff uh, rear differential lock, front and rear lock, hazards, traction control. All right, so this is your, your uh, parking sensors and auto rear braking system. So right now it's on, but if I click it, the light goes off and your rear auto brake is turned off as well as your rear park assist, okay? And then of course right here, this is your auto parking. This does have auto parking. Uh, it can parallel park and it can perpendicular park. Um, you just need to press that button and then follow the directions on the screen. It will also unpark you and it will, it will uh, shift gears and steer. So you've also got one physical button over here and this is power and volume for the screen. Okay, that is the basics of of everything that you just you see here. So now let's dive in to the infotainment screen. All right. So uh, if you just want to see all the apps, you can go to home, and then right here, you're gonna have the apps. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start up here. 
uh, just because this is what it has in order. But I don't have a trailer hooked up, obviously, but you can look at lights, you can look at cameras, and you can go through a checklist to set it up, making sure that everything is connected right, which is nice. If your trailer has a camera, um, you you can uh, use that in here. You know, whether it's the ghosted out image of the trailer, uh, an in-trailer uh, in camera, or the cameras on the back of the trailer. You can view that from here uh, with a little bit of setup. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Off-road. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, so, so many things here. All right. So right now it's uh, showing uh, it's in the entry exit ride height. Uh, it shows you your axle torque. If I go over one more, you're going to get your elevation. Okay, You get your compass. You also get a bunch of information over here. That in addition, tells you that your drive mode is normal. You're going to notice there are some icons here, and I'll get to those in a little bit because they stay the same no matter what screen you're in. All right, you've got uh, tire pressure here. It tells you that the front and rear diffs are unlocked. And you got your pitch and roll here, and then you got suspension over here. Okay, you can click there to reset the extreme values if you want, because it'll, it'll remember them. All right, one more screen. Okay, drift angle, that's cool. And of course, a G meter. And then a graphic of it right there, which is really cool. Okay. Now, the buttons over here, uh, this one gives you one of the auxiliary buttons that you can preset uh, for whatever you have. Maybe it's the uh, trailer camera, maybe it's some other accessory you've added. So they give that to you right on the screen. Uh, this one is a cool system. Um, this does not have a self-inflation or deflate system for the tires. But what you can do is you can just go here and set the PSI that you want. And when you air down... Uh, when you get 13 PSI, it'll honk the horn, and then you know it's correct. Okay, so it's nice that it has that. You you can also um, go here and use the buttons if you want. Okay, you do want to press the start button. All right, so let's just get out of that. Cameras. Oh, my gosh, this has cameras. Let me tell you what. Ha! Uh, I think GMC does such a great job on all of their vehicles with cameras, and this is no exception. So right here, I've got a top-down view, uh, and I get my dynamic swivel guidelines in the front, and of course, I got my very front camera. If I push this button, I get my rear camera. All right, switch it back to the front. I'm going to take a look at this. Now, this is like a top-down where my hood is, so nice if I'm trying to, like, either coming over a hill or uh, want to see some obstacles right in front of me, I can do that. If I switch here, of course, it just switch the same, does the same thing in the back. Okay, right here, I get my uh, front left tire, my front right tire. You can see them turning. And over here, I get a hitch view. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this one for a minute to get some of these other ones. All right, right here, if I get that, it's going to take out the 360 view and give me a fuller screen for this. Okay, Even though it doesn't take up the entire screen, it's still a, a pretty good image. All right. All right. Now, this is, of course, I can take off the uh, guidelines uh, and the trailer view, or I can put that back on. All right, now I got this little arrow here, so I'm going to click here, and I've got a couple more cameras. So here we go. Underneath, in the front, this is my front tires. So if I turn, you can see them. So that's why when you're going over terrain, you can look right underneath your vehicle, which is just <laughs> that's way awesome. And here's the rear camera doing the same things. So if you're going over something and you want to look at your rear tires, you can do that. Okay, over here, I get a split view. So I've got my front camera plus my underneath camera on the front tires. And here, I get front and rear tire view. Ha! Huh, just, just amazing. Okay, there's no trailer hooked up, but if I did, here we two of my trailer views. I can see a bed cam. And again, I can turn on or off those 
uh, guidelines, the trailer guideline and the, uh, the, the other guidelines if I want. Okay, but that is just way cool. Just so many cool cameras. Okay, so uh, that's the off-road pages. Now, if I go here to phone, I'm going to hook one up in a little bit, so I'm going to skip that one. Go to Google Maps. So the easiest way to program a route is one of two things. You can quickly press the voice command button on the right side of the steering wheel and then say your command, or you can just do this. Hey, Google, find the closest Dairy Queen. You just click there. I already had one running, so I'm just going to add a stop. Tells you what your battery charge is going to be on arrival. You know, gives you, like any other um, navigation, gives you the phone numbers, a bunch of information you can call. I am going to get out of here because I have very, very uh, low internet signal here. And uh, I am going to just talk about some of the other features in navigation. Of course, you can zoom in or zoom out, but you can also just pinch and rotate. And it's very, very responsive. Okay. Uh, now, up here, I have uh, a, you know another search bar. I can search for charging stations, uh, places to eat if I want. It's offline right now, so I'm not going to bother doing it. Shopping areas, coffee stores, the, that kind of stuff. What I want to show you do is how to make some changes in the navigation that are one-time changes as long as you own the vehicle. Unless your personality changes, then you know maybe you'll have to go back and do it again. All right, first of all, okay, if I click here, this is going to change the view of the map. So I can click here to do a couple of things. One, I can mute it. Two, I can click it again. It gives me an exclamation mark, and I'll get alerts only, so it'll just ding at me. Or it's unmuted, and I get the voice talking to me. Up here is where you can make these one-time settings. So um, do you want to see traffic? Yes or no? If that's, that's yes, that's no. Okay, route options. Avoid highways, avoid tolls, avoid ferries, click whatever you want, and it will remember anytime you program a route to not look for those things. Um, and then, uh, I think I think that's it. Those are, they're very, very quick, very basic. And then this one is just your voice command. All right, so let's move on here. That, that's navigation. Let's go on to media. Okay, now in media, I'm gonna show you how to uh, change the channels, how to save a favorite, uh, and how to set the sound settings. So. How to change channels. Okay, you're just going to have a channel button. It's going to go from one channel to the next here. You can, of course, swipe if you want, which is very nice. You see how fluid and quick it is. You can punch in a number here if you want. And I don't know what that is, but you can hit go. And there you go. Now, how do you save a favorite? Well, to save a favorite, you're just going to click on any one of these, even if they're preset. If you want an empty one, just go over. Click and hold, and there you go. So that's how you're going to tune. Uh, that's how you're going to save a, a preset uh, favorite. Now let me show you sound. I'm going to go up here. Okay, so over here you've got the equalizer. Just click and drag. Or you can use the arrows if you want. you got bass, mid-range, and treble. If I go back, you've got fade and bounce. Again, it's just a click, drag, or... You can use the arrows. You can also just hit the reset to bring it back to center. Going down here, you've got sound mode, center point, which is awesome. Or you want just the rear passengers for li to listen, just the driver, normal, all seating positions, or the Bose center point. All right. Bose audio pilot can be turned on or off right here. Okay. And then this is where you manage your favorites. So if I go here... I want to get rid of something, just click on it. Now it's gone. If I want to reorder, like I say, I did Shade 45, but I want Shade 45 to be earlier. So I'm just going to click here. Wow, it's very quick. I didn't, I was, going, I was waiting for it, but there you go. Right? Or, again, just delete it. Okay, so that is how you're going to manage your favorites, which is very, very, very nice. Uh, they make that so easy to do. Okay. Now, I also want to show you that it, it is the same for 
AM and FM as well. So this is Sirius XM. I'm going to go to my sources. I'm going to go over here to FM. You're going to see it's laid out exactly the same way. Tuning, press to uh, uh, hold to create a favorite. And then there's your sound settings and manage your favorites. And then if I go to AM, it is going to be uh, the same setup. So they all three work the same. Okay, um, let's go then to the home screen. And we've talked about these two. So let's go over to energy. I will get back to phone. Okay. This has got a few things under because this is all electric. So let's just go to charging. Um, you can charge now instead of charge to 100%. If I want to change that, I could come in here and readjust that. If I didn't want to go charge to 100%. Okay. Uh, I can charge later and then I can set up a time and how much I want to charge, uh, what percentage I want to charge up to. It'll tell me how many miles it'll give me. And then I can turn on preconditioning for the battery if I want. All right, let's go to schedule. All right, here, you just click on this and you're gonna create a charging schedule. Okay, I won't go through that because you gotta set up a home and everything, uh, but just follow the directions on the screen. Energy usage, okay? You can see the distance driven, uh, how much energy is being used, and of course, uh, I've been pushing the pedal a little hard here now and then, so I've used more than you would if you were just driving average, uh, uh, averagely. Yeah. Is that a word? I'm not sure. Maybe it is. All right. Settings. Okay. Home charge location. Notifications if you want. If there are any, you want to get charge status feedback, charge power loss alert, headlight charge indicator. Um, that's cool. Uh, when you plug it in, if that's turned on, your your front uh, lights at the top is say, uh, at the, I think it's on the very outside lights, but they will indicate that it's charging and then they change to blue when it's charged it, or green or something. But it's cool. They, they change colors, which is really neat. All right. Um, I'm going to go through all these, but this is where you can go through and make a pre, you know, like pre, uh, preferred charge times, preconditioning temperature, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's go back to home. This is your Google Assistant. You can just click on it. It's just going to be the same as clicking on the voice command button. You got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We'll set those up in a little bit. I've already showed you the cameras, and I showed you uh, this off-road page, which is just awesome. All right, we'll go back here. Um, trailering, uh, I showed you this a little bit early in a different location, but it's just another way to get to it. Uh, rear climate, this has tri-zone climate control. I've already showed you all the controls up here, which is all you need. But if you like a digital display, here you go. Hey, you can have that up there. All right, let's go back to home. Um, we'll come back to settings in a minute. You can set up, of course, a Wi-Fi hotspot if you want. Uh, you can go into my GMC studio. Okay. You can download uh, some, uh, like Hulu, I'm assuming you can get Netflix. Um, so, but you're gonna have to, of course, have a data plan for that. All right, let's go back. Of course, you have Amazon Alexa, uh, My GMC app. And of course, you got uh, Google Podcasts and Google News as audio sources. All right, let's go back. Before I go to settings, let's go over to phone. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to connect my Android. Once I have gone to this screen, I'm going to go into my uh, Android phone. I'm going to go on to click on settings, and I'm going to click on connections. I could just plug in with a USB cable, and it would Android Auto would come up instantly. But I like mine wireless, especially since this has a wireless phone charger uh, right down below uh, the air vents right here. Okay, I'm going to click on uh, Bluetooth, and now I'm going to say Manage Phones, and I'm going to hit Plus. Okay, I'm going to look for GMC, and it says My GMC right on my phone, so I'm going to click on that. It says it's pairing. This is the number it sent to my phone. Is that the same? It is, so I'm going to hit Pair there, Pair on my phone. Okay, now this is an important part. Right here, I can disable or enable Android Auto. So if you want to use Android Auto, you'll need to click Enable. If you want to use regular Bluetooth, you click Disable. 
I am going to click Enable, and then on my phone it says, do you want uh, the system to allow uh, access messages? Yes, that's fine. I'll click Allow. You would want to do, I'm assuming, the same on your vehicle. Do I want the system to access my contacts? Yes. Okay. So, in a minute, here we go. And the thing that I love, and this is an improvement over uh, last year's edition. It's a software update. Um, Auto, uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay were not full screen. So this has been updated, which is just awesome. These are your most recently used items, okay? If I click the little square here, I get a split window, okay? If I click it again, it's gonna show me all my apps and then a, sh a split window for navigation. Uh, in Android Auto, you scroll up or down to see uh, the all the apps that you have. Now, there's two ways to get out of Android Auto, and that is you can press the GMC exit button or you can press the home button. Okay, I'm going to go back to home because I want to go through settings. So if I go to settings here, you can take a look at all the connections. This is your, your phones and your Wi-Fi hotspot, Wi-Fi networks. You want to hook to your home network. You want to make the vehicle be a hotspot. You can do all that from there. Okay. Uh, under vehicle, we have a bunch of different things. One pedal driving. If you've never done that in an electric car, it's really nice. It basically it saves on your brakes because it as soon as you let off the accelerator, it's it, it use it starts to regenerate power and and brake and use, but uses uh, the motors to do it. So you're saving on your brakes. All right, uh, you can set teen driver. This is a very familiar thing in GMC products, but you can geofence. You can see reports on your teens driving speed acceleration, that kind of stuff. It makes sure that all the safety systems are turned on. They can't be turned off, that kind of stuff. Rear seat reminder, very handy. Uh, it'll just uh, remind you to check the back seat when you get out, if that's on. Buckle to drive. All right, if you turn that on, you, you put it in drive and you're not buckled, it's not going to go anywhere. You have to buckle before it'll allow you to drive, okay? Super Cruise lane change. This does have Super Cruise, and there's a blue light that shows up at the top of the steering wheel. There's a camera that watches you that from just behind the steering wheel. Um, but uh, you can have Super uh, Super Cruise lane change be automatic, or you can say, I want turn signal activated, so it won't um, change lanes unless you signal, okay? Which, to me, would be the mode I would want. Um, Here's where you can customize your drive modes, and I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, climate and air quality, you can take a look at that. You want auto-cooled and ventilated seats turned on so that uh, when you're, you precondition the vehicle when you're ready to go, your seats and steering wheel are already at the appropriate temperature according to the ambient temperature outside. Rear climate on startup. You want it as last known. You know, whatever was last set to or mimic the front or off completely. Don't worry about the rear. Um, the yeah, auto defog can be turned on, auto uh, rear defog can be turned on. So it's so a lot of just one-time settings you can go in. Collision detection systems. This, this thing has got quite a few. So first thing you do is you set the alert type. So do you want beeps or do you want safety alert seat vibrations? And if you want something that you're going to notice, leave it on that because it vibrates your seat. It's unusual. It causes you to pay attention. All right. I'm automatic emergency braking. You can have it off, alert only, or alert and brake. I suggest you leave it there. That would be what I would do. Front pedestrian braking. Again, same choices. Park assist with braking. It's going to give you proximity alerts for things that are behind you uh, uh, or ahead. And you want you want that off? I, I wouldn't suggest that. Alert or alert and brake. Now, this is a wide vehicle. This is several inches wider than the previous Hummer. So it is very, very wide. Uh, but I will say, given that, with the four-wheel steering, because the back wheels will turn up to 10 degrees, uh, wow, what a difference. I, I drove it all around town today, and to me, it was just it was like driving my car. Um, wasn't a whole lot different despite its size. So uh, kudos to GMC and Hummer for uh, making that really easy because it could be not easy all right 
Uh, park assist toe bar off, not attached, or on attached. Right, that's right there. Rear cross traffic alert. You can turn that on or off. Rear pedestrian alert. And again, if you click on it, you're just going to get the same options. Okay. Comfort and convenience. We won't go through all those, but easy exit vehicle height. That's on. So every time I turn the vehicle off, it's going to lower itself. And every time I get in and start it, it's going to raise it back up without me even doing anything. Turn that off, and it, it'll vehicle will stay at whatever height you last had it set at. Of course, you can do date and time, but usually you can just click on the date and time. Yep, and there you go. Now, on the display, right now, you may be wondering, well, every Humber video I see has got a white screen. Yep, it does in the daytime mode. But for videotaping today, it was easier to have it in nighttime mode uh, to make the graphics appear a little better. So that is why I have changed that. It does go back. I'll show you real quick. If I go to day, you're going to get that stark white um, contrast. There we go. Uh, there are things, various different sounds, of course. So maximum volume at startup. If you don't want the radio, that kind of stuff, in, like blaring loud or on when you start the vehicle, turn that to uh, maximum volume to down. Okay? Uh, if I go down, you can look at users. You can set up different uh, uh, profiles. Um, and you, if you go into users, you, I'm signed in as an admin right now, but this is where you would add user and just follow the directions on the screen. But it saves everything. It saves, you know, all of your uh, media settings, your favorites, what you want your screen to look like, what, I mean, where your seat is, where your steering wheel is. Very, very nice. If you have, you know, two people that regularly drive the vehicle, really nice to have those profiles. Updates. This does have, of course, over-the-air updates. You can check for that. You can set preferences, Okay. So you can have download the updates in the background uh, and download updates via Wi-Fi when available. But you notice it's not going to update it until you're parked because uh, everything is digital and it's going to probably change something in your screens. Uh, you know, so it doesn't want you driving while the actual update is, uh, is going. But if it downloads the update, then at least it's ready to go. Now, I'm going to go back to the home screen. I want to show you the drive modes because... Oh, this is cool. And then I'm going to show you how to customize your drive mode. So uh, down in the uh, center console, you have a rotary button uh, with a couple of other options on the inside of it. To change modes, you're going to rotate. So watch this. Whoa, look at that breaking through that cyber wall. Switch it again. It's going to break through a wall again. I love this. Kicking up dirt? Absolutely. Okay. I love the graphics. Very, very good. Probably the best I've seen in a car. Of course, it came uh, from a company that works on gaming systems. So, I love this. Okay, switch it again. My mode. So, uh, you notice under every single one, there's a little pencil. So, here I'm in my mode. So, I don't mean to switch it again. Otherwise, it disappears on me. If I click on the pencil, now I can customize steering. These are my choices. Suspension, acceleration, motor sound. This is where you can change your motor sound. And then here you can choose your favorite everyday driving settings. And then when you go to my mode, all that will go as well as these. So that's where you customize it. Let's talk for a minute about the other buttons on the rotary knob to change modes. If I press uh, the picture of a car with turn wheels. If I just press it once and let it go, it's going to give me rear steering off. If I press it again, it's going to turn it to auto. And then if I push and hold, though, that's going to give me crab walk. If I continue to hold it, it takes it back off again. There's another button opposite on the side of that. It's, got, it's it kind of looks like a triangle. And if I click on that, this is a way, it gives you an email address, uh, epicideas at gmc.com, where you can write in suggestions to, to GMC about the Hummer. I mean, that's really cool. It's like an instant feedback button. I love that. 
And then the other two uh, buttons on here are to raise or lower the suspension. So uh, that is uh, just really, really cool. So that is it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the 2023 GMC Hummer EV pickup. And again, this was an E4 wheel drive crew cab 3X and it is an edition one. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.